On today's show, I'm going to read from a booklet of a company that specifically has the aim to wean Christians away. I want to show you the revelation of what they do so that you will never be deceived. See you soon. Did you know that there is a world beyond what you can see with your physical eyes? How can you know what comes from the light versus the darkness? Alan Strudwick wants to help you discern God's truth from the dangers of false religion, false teachers, pseudoscience philosophies, and demonic influences waiting to deceive even the very elite. And now, here's your host of The Truth Project, Alan Strudwick. Hi, welcome to The Truth Project. I'm Alan Strudwick. Today, I want to give you a direct example from an introduction booklet to a, this is a course, and it's called A Course in Miracles. I even know Christians that have preached this from the pulpit, have um, spoken about it, recommended it. This is just the introduction booklet, which I'm going to go through in a moment. But the reason I'm going through this is the actual Course in Miracles is a four volume uh, document or book as well. And it's been made into that. But I want to let you know that this was actually purposely created. Remember, I told you that I was in the secret meetings and one of the things was to wean Christians away from their absolute faith and their absolute spirit of God. And part of that was that there would be companies such as this that would end up being encouraged or financed financially to be able to go across the world. You'd be surprised at how many things have actually come out of either New Age or even religions that are similar, but they've come out as an occult from the New Age. But it's an interesting thing because this is directly meant to deceive. The reason I'm going to go through it is I want to do several things. I want to shock you. (laughs) And at the same time, I want to show you how close the enemy comes in his word level Um, And at the same time, I also want to show you how ridiculous it actually is when you know who Jesus is and you're a believer in him. So I'm going to go through different parts, read different parts to you. Now, please be clear. This is demonic. This is not good. Um, um, And as I share it, you'll get it. But in one way, it's going to sound silly to you on some things. And that's because they'll do certain things and say certain things to try and convince. Now, this one, though, was particularly done with the aim to convince Christians. Okay, so let me just um, go through the introduction manual with you and explain a few different things to you. So first of all, is that the course was authored by, not by a person, but by an inner voice. Okay, so that's they chant this person channeled this actual course from a spirit. Now, so that you know the person who channeled this, her name is Helen Shookman. And so she channeled a spirit that was dictating to her of this new revelation, this new message. Okay. Now, she believes that it was done to her. Now, I'll talk about this later, but she's not a Christian. She's a proclaimed um, atheist against God. But she said that in the secular age we're moving into, it appears that people have forgotten God so that this is now a new breakthrough of God into the world, which you'll see is all false. But you see how they set it up, because in one way, that's reality. The the world is is losing a lot of different things to do with God and 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 their belief in God. But they'll set it up that way. So there's a little bit of truth there. And then you come to this part. It says, The approach of the course, in fact, is very psychological. And this is some of the things they're stating. All human ills are rooted in mental illness. So they're saying everything that's wrong on the planet is a a mental illness, which I don't agree with. The practice of Course in Miracles is therefore a kind of psychotherapy where the patient is able to become their own inner teacher. So they're not talking about anything outside. They're saying the course will actually do and touch your inner teacher, your inner God. And then this little one line on the end of it says, and the course will call this the Holy Spirit. Straight out deception. It's like, it's not the Holy Spirit they're talking about. They're talking about a demonic spirit that they've channeled. 
And you don't, I, I'm only going to explain this, and you don't need to ever do any research unless you want to, but when you read through the books, which I've done for my own research, when I became a, a believer in Jesus, it is full of deception, complete deception. It's, it's an awful, evil book. And as I said, it was planned that way. So then why, well, why would they use the Holy Spirit? Because they want to deceive. Who do they want to deceive? Christians. All right, so... Then uh, this part's interesting. They, this is what she's saying. They always want to bring in and pull down. This is one of the MOs that they'll do is always pull down Christianity in some way. And so this is what they're saying. First of all, about heaven. Here's their definition of heaven. Reality is a oneness which transcends distinction, differences and change, a condition that is outside space and time and its comprehension and the course calls this heaven. And it's a condition that we're in and it's nothing outside of us. So there we go. We come straight back again that God within us, heaven within us as well. Then it says this about Christianity. The figure of Jesus Christ must be probably one of the most powerful influences in the 2000 years. What's that? Truth. OK, so you now have truth. Then they throw in after it this straight after that line. And this is how the enemy works. But also, I remember in one of the earliest shows, I told you I was specifically trained in NLP by the founder, John Grinder. And that's what this does. You bring in a strong truth and then you put a lie straight behind it. And most people miss it. Here's the lie. In fact, one of the course's more startling claims is that it's actually authored through channeling by the author of Christianity, Jesus Christ. So now this woman is saying that the whole course of miracles is actually channeled, Jesus Christ channeled as a spirit. Now, I know from my experience and everything else, that's a demonic, deceiving, familiar spirit. But that's what she's claiming. Now, if you were a Christian and you weren't aware of anything spiritual and you didn't know how to test the spirit, they just said that Jesus Christ is the most influential person in 2000 years and then straight away says that it's him channeling through her. So it's deception. OK, the next thing is, it says the course, however, is clearly intended not to be a reinstatement of the Bible, but a purification of the Bible. <laughs> So now we're going against so many scriptures here where even Paul warns, don't even, even if an angel comes and gives you a different gospel, don't go near it. Um, so, and I'm, and I'm, I'm sh sharing this so that you understand how ridiculous it is, but at the same time what the enemy does in the methods. Show truth at the beginning and then these two lies straight after it. And then it says this about Christianity. Traditional Christianity that is around today implies sin and evil. And by labeling it, Christianity has subtly added to our burden of guilt and our reinforced limitations and has made God a punisher. Isn't it interesting that she's pulling out that it needs to be a purification and that, that Christianity's labeling sin and evil has actually caused the problems on the planet. Okay, then it comes on and then it says in the next thing that this is not the gospel I intend. Jesus actually says, okay, so she, she is now saying this and writing this, saying that the course, which remember Jesus is the person supposedly being channeled, which is an evil spirit, deceptive spirit. So this deceptive spirit is now saying that this is not the gospel I intended to offer, meaning the Bible, referring to the Bible. This is not the gospel I intended to offer. Now straight away then you would know that that's a demon. Straight away, that, it's, that Jesus didn't intend to put the gospel out. And that sin, here's the definition of sin, are somehow actually just only dreams. And that only God will is real and God's will is limited love, which it is. God's love is limitless. Then it goes to the next thing. The course function as a purifier of Christianity, a purifier. Many of the course's ideas are drawn from, but changed. So even the term miracle, because when you think course of miracles, if you're a Christian, you would think it was a book about miracles. This is the redefinition of miracles. The course reinterprets it into a psychological term and instead a divine intervention into the physical world which heals our body is a miracle, but it's all from our thought patterns and nothing from outside of us. So now you have um, them saying that a, the actual miracle is not actually a God miracle. It's not even a miracle that comes from God or an outside force. It actually comes from us internally. So again, Focus back on us being God. So you can imagine what would happen with someone when they would start to read the book. And I do know that because I know Christians, even pastors that have actually read the other books and believe all of this without understanding the deception that's, that exists. 
Again, now she's talking about how she was convinced the author was Jesus and that the claims on one level, she seemed to be very deep and she had an intimate relationship with him, even though she didn't believe in him. It's, see, how can you do that? That's how convoluted the enemy is and, and how they do it with word level, that even though she had an intimate relationship with him when she was channeling this demon in the course, she was against him and didn't believe in it. So, and it was then interesting because she then took, continues here and says, consciously, people have fear and resentment concerning Jesus. Some people might and some people might not. But you find out later that she actually says here that she did it and it opened up the op opened up a door to her that she could never shut. And she said she felt like it was evil. This is at a later stage. So again, more deception is showing up. But again, this is just the introductions, not even the book. So what do we have? Oh, then she was told by a numerologist that this was uh, this was when she before she started to write the book. She actually was about looking at telling us now why she actually did the book. She went to a New Age uh, festival and had what they call it's a Carillion photograph. It's like they take photographs supposedly of your aura that's around. And she had that done. And this lady walked past her and said, I'm a psychic. I'd like to talk to you. And this is what she's told us. She said that one of the most spiritual documents known to humanity will be penned by your hand and channeled by it. So the psychic then started. So now you start to see the roots of where this starts. So a psychic approached her. She was in a New Age festival. She was against God, but she was in the New Age spiritual stuff. And then she gets channeled by this demonic spirit who all he had to do was say he was Jesus and she believed it. So quite a powerful thing. Um, here, here's another thing that is about salvation. We know in the Bible the truth that's in here, but this is how it starts to trick you in salvation. It says there is an infinite expanse of unified awareness. This is very much similar to Hinduism. In heaven, a single identity and separate identity will mingle and merge and it will unite to a form, a single universe self. And that's what the Course calls Christ or the Messiah. Isn't that an interesting thing that now we're now finding out the real depth of it. That they're not, it's not even about heaven. Heaven is where, again, Hinduism, we all become one of the universe. Uh, a spirit joins and, and continues with it. So uh, let me read that again to you. Heaven is a place where separate identities and souls will mingle and merge, unite to form a single universal self and the course that calls Christ. Now, I'm saying this to you and you're probably thinking, yeah, that sounds crazy. I know all about that. I, I, I would not even do this course. I understand that. But this is the introduction where you can find all the truth about what's really happening in the books. It doesn't mention this stuff, but this is where they want you to go because they'll mention the word heaven. They'll mention the word Christ, but they're not actually mentioning what we know as Christ and what we know as the Holy Spirit, what we know as the Messiah, and what we know as Jesus. That's what we know. But in here, the introduction, they're exposing it, which is amazing for us to be able to get that exposure of it. So I don't know about you, but that's definitely new age. I'm just telling you straight out. If you want to have your soul mingle and merge and unite a form of universal self, it's interesting because some of the new age will even talk about Jesus. And I've got that in my book. And it talks about how um, there's a consciousness that we can become in heaven. There's a consciousness and doing all that. So it's just simply new age. And I'm going to continue going through this book in the next segment. you know that there has been a 30-year top secret plan conceived by Far Eastern gurus? This plan has been deceptively hidden in the New Age religion to try and convert Christians and Jews in the West to embrace the false gods of Hinduism and Buddhism. Over two decades ago, Alan Strudwick was chosen as a child to be trained by leading gurus in the Hindu religion, whose mission was to infiltrate the church and convert Christians into Eastern religions. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. In this book, Alan retells his life journey of deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices that ends when he has a miraculous encounter with God the Father and Jesus. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age, Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Astrology, Reincarnation, Aura Cleansing, 
astral travel, psychic and palm readings, tarot cards, Reiki healing, and so much more. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. Understand that yoga is a demonic gateway opening doors for spiritual attacks. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. Welcome back. I'm going to continue going through this book. I hope it's um, explaining things to you and enlightening you and hopefully shocking you as well as how, how crazy this is, but then how they're going to use all the Christian terms into, into their book without you really knowing it unless you read this introduction. So I want to, I'll continue sharing a few things here in, in this um, second segment because I just think it's important for you to understand what they say, but at the same time, you start to learn how to use that discernment, as I mentioned in the other sessions and the other shows. All right, this one. I like this one. There, there, this is a central dilemma, being trapped by forces beyond our control. See, now it's relating to people like me who's a believer in Jesus thinking that I'm trapped in forces such as God and rules and restrictions. So seem to be trapped by forces beyond control. This is our central dilemma, a dilemma for which the course has the radical answer. And the world, it says, cannot trap us, limit us or control us. Now wait for this part. For the world is actually an illusion. It actually doesn't exist. It's a dream. And we're the ones billions of years ago who fell asleep and dreamed it up. That's crazy stuff right there. But that's what the whole book is on the premises of that. And as I said, I, I'm shocked, but Christians will read it and preach it and talk about it because it has the words Holy Spirit, it has the words Jesus in it. Well, here we are. It is an illusion. So they believe that six billion years ago, all of us fell asleep and dreamed it up. That's pretty fascinating. All right, let's find another one here. So that's about heaven. We've talked about that. This one now is about sin. This is interesting. Sin is throughout and mentioned throughout their book, The Course in Miracles, but this is what they really believe it is. Sin is an illusion. It does not create a debt that we must pay, and it does not need to be pardoned by an outside force. So if you follow that and follow the other things, then that's saying that you don't need to be pardoned by an outside force. What are they meaning? The fact that Jesus died for our sins and we have been given grace and pardon. They're saying that you don't have to. And again, they're saying it's only a dream and we must wake up from it. The problem is only in our mind and it is there that it must be restored. Isn't that interesting? That sin is in my mind. Now, when I was in the New Age, this is why this is an advantage for you and why I'm doing this show called The Truth Project is because I'm someone that has the credentials of working in the darkness and knowing exactly what's happening and now working for God and in the light and knowing where the deception is. So now in the course, we see they take sin out and then we don't even need to be pardoned by it, which is meaning forgiveness from God and asking for repentance. And so therefore we, according to this and the book, we will live a life full of sin and, and the effects of it, which is not good. All right, let's see what else. This last part is an interesting one. I'll read the beginning part. And then there's one statement on the end here, which is quite a powerful one. It says, if the, cor if the course and if we also grant the cor course's claim that Jesus is now the leader of the, of the world and to save the world. So there's, that's terminology you and I as believers would understand. But then it continues and it says that he, this one 1,200 page book. So it's a big book. Uh, you know, some places have put it in three volumes, but this 100, uh, sorry, 1,200 page book is an answer to our deepest, innermost problem. And here it comes. This is what they're saying is the world's biggest problem. It is, the book is clearly intended of a large scale correction 
of errors that was put down in the Bible. Hmm, interesting. And they're saying that Jesus himself is actually the one that supposedly is channeled and has come through and written this whole book that would then be a course in miracles and that we should all follow it. So it's a perfect example, this book, of how the whole new age will use deception but mix with truth. And I mentioned that on one of the earlier shows, that when you do that um, and you start to mix it, because I remember I, I mentioned that in one of our original plans was to actually have a 30-year goal to be able to bring in deception, to be able to bring in um, and change world philosophies, change world religions and change different things. And that was our whole aim, was to be able to do that and to be able to culturally change it. It's an interesting thing when you try to change culture, and this is one of the things that why we decided it had to be almost 30 years, is we had to look at, at, at studying strategies that actually change culture. I know there's a lot that's out there today that talks about different things to do with culture and different opposing sides to do with the culture needs to be different and, and, and race theories and all that type of thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a spiritual thing. If you have a country, and let's say several countries in Europe, uh, Australia, even in North America, you have countries that actually believe in a God, that actually at some point around the 50s, 60s, they actually believe that there is a God and that there is a, um, a, a religion that was called Christianity that people believed in. They were believers in Jesus. If you have that as a concept, you can't just come straight in with, with all of this silly nonsense and silly deception and then everyone's going to believe it. This sort of stuff is not going to be believed within a year of, uh, you know, you need time. You need time to wean it and you need strategies to wean it and you need different things that needs to be implemented time after time after time. So you do two things. You wear down the absolute that was there before and then you slowly start to wean into a new absolute or a new way of thinking which actually leads down into deception. But you can't do that overnight. I did a study when we were trying to work on... Um, uh, this type of strategy in the sense of wh why does it take the 20, 30 years? One of the things that I looked at was the whole um, homosexual type of parades that we used to have in Australia. One of the things that was interesting was that I noticed was that in the 60s and the 70s, it, it, was, it was something that when it got finally approved, no one would go to, no one really went to it, no one would even actually um, promote it. But over a period of about 25 years, it got to the point that it had changed so much. It had changed to the point that now it was being advertised as not just a gay parade but in the city, but it was being advertised as a family event, bring your kids. And, and you know, there was, there was food trucks, there was this. Everything around it was then completely changed. Now, um, what I'm talking about here is cultural change. I've done it in companies as well. If you do it over a period of time, you actually can change even belief systems. So when we were in the new age and we knew that we could change this over 30 years, one of the things that we implemented was these types of new age things. That's why it was very important for me to be involved in it, not just to evolve the, eventually have the, the one world religion but to, and to pull Christians away, but primarily, almost like an experiment, how do we put out different types of things to do with New Age that are spiritual so in such a way that people will then wean away from an absolute of spiritual and then follow a New Age way of doing it and as the end result would then be against the ones that had the absolute. I, for the probably the last five or ten years, have prophesied this over and over and over and I remember, as I said, about five years ago, I, would start, I started to prophesy because I was seeing it in the natural, but I also saw it in the spirit, was that it was going to get to a point that Christians were like this, and we were going to get to a point where Christians 
that we in the new age wanted to wean away would start to wean separately. And they would be what was called now, people call it a woke, but basically they would be Christians who didn't really believe in the absolute anymore. They didn't really believe there's just one God. They believe that everyone can get saved. Many passed to God. They'd get weaned by the things that we implemented. And yet over here would be the absolutes, still believers of Jesus, still believers of his word, still believers of, of him. And then what the Lord showed me was that these absolute ones would then be attacked by these, that these people would start speaking to them and saying to them that, <laughs> that they were wrong, that we're almost like we're the bad spirits, we're the evil spirits. And, and, and it's predicted throughout the world. It's been predicted throughout the Bible about how in the latter times, good would be called evil and evil would be called good. And that's the, the season we're moving into. That's why I'm so passionate doing the Truth Project now. Um, I know there's even woke Christians now, Christians that have weaned away, Christians that I set up designs 30 years ago for them to be away are actually away. It worked. Those people speak against me. I <laughs> think it's hilarious. They speak against me and say that I'm deceptive. I'm deceived because I believe in an absolute. Isn't that an interesting thing that that's what, what they're saying? So as we move forward into the next shows, I want to spend a bit more time on, again, the things of, of where deception sits so that you are very clear by all the information that you know that you don't have to actually necessarily be intelligent. You just need to know the Word of God and you need to know how to test the Spirit. So that's about all you actually need to do. So let me just as well remind you about Another thing about this, the Christians, I just thought of it then, and, and the attack and the attack of them is the, the thing called in the New Age. Do you know in the New Age we believed in the rapture? We actually believed in it so much that we came up with themes and we came up with things that would actually handle these absolute Christians if they were ever raptured. We actually came up with themes and one of them was a, that a UFO, if there was ever a rapture and all the Christians had left the planet, that a UFO actually came and grabbed all of the Christians and took them away and moved them to another planet so that they could be evolved. Remember in the very beginning show, I talked about how Hinduism, the belief is that it's the one soul and Christians were here for their first lifetime and they had to evolve up. That's how low they were. So the whole thing of deception about if there was a rapture and they all left, that here was our answer in the new age. We even went down to those fine points of knowing what to do in the latter times and that we would blame it on the Christians had to be removed, taken to another planet, spiritually evolved, so then they could be taken back and brought back to earth at some point, but now they're spiritually evolved just like this with this type of material. Now, isn't that shocking of what we're involved in, but that's the truth and that's why this is called The Truth Project. So see you next week on The Truth Project. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com to connect with Alan, get questions answered, and submit your prayer requests. Download the ministry app and let Alan equip you and inspire you wherever you are. Find great teaching throughout his CDs, books, eBooks you can download, and more. And be informed with timely ministry, updates, and exciting interviews. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com.